December the 14th, 2012, Dr. Iran el Haik turned almost two generations of Jewish genome research upside down, but he went even further. The young Israeli-American geneticist has charged former researchers with academic fraud, and he has the research to back it up. How could those eminent Jewish scientists before him have been so wrong? Easy, says Dr. El Haik. First, these researchers decided what the conclusions they wanted to find, and then they set off to find evidence to support it. I was not bashing scientists. What El Haik has described as full-on fraud. But why? Why would Jews who take such pride in their academic achievement risk exposing themselves to a group deception which was bound to be discovered sooner or later? Dr. El Haik does not delve into the quicksand of the politics, but I will gladly do so. They perpetrated the fraud solely to support the bogus biblical claim to Palestine, which was anchored in their being a separate people. This distinguished them from all others because they claimed a land title in their blood. They bet the farm on this DNA proof of purchase, a God-given barcoded passport to Palestine. Dr. El Haik just erased the barcode. It was just stamped on anyway because it was never in the blood. Why? Why did they do it? The second half of the answer not revealed in his research was that you had a bunch of atheist communist Jews shoot their way into taking over the land with the sole moral cover that God gave it to us only. Before I had a bookcase of Judaica in my library, I must say I was a bit suspicious of these atheist Jews whipping out God's dual land title and passport. It was propaganda, of course. It always was. And the story for another day is, why did an entire academic community, who should have known better, cower down and debase themselves and their own community by allowing the fraud to not only be burst, but continued? Arthur Kustler's The Thirteenth Tribe was a major influence in cracking the fraud. It was published in the day when Zionist propagandists were savvy in not attacking an esteemed Jewish author. They had no fear from the academic community, already neutralized, and Kustler's book did not generate a moral tipping point challenge to the Zionist false claim on the land. Dr. L. Hike literally nails the fraudsters to the cross. They assume that the Jews constitute a group that is genetically isolated from other nations. That's because Jews were never genetically isolated, making all those other studies fatally flawed and very often contradictory. I was wondering what weapon of mass destruction that the Jewish lobby bullies would unleash upon the young Israeli-American geneticist. I expected to be reading about Alan Dershowitz denouncing him as a self-hating Jew, when actually that is what Dershowitz is. He and Abe Foxman compete for the most negative Jewish stereotype bully competition award annually. But there has been no attack. The 32-year-old Dr. El Haider is getting the Arthur Kustler treatment in spades. What do I mean? Well, his research paper was published by the Oxford University Press in the prestigious journal Genome Biology and Evolution. But do you think a bunch of savvy Zionist propagandists are going to worry about the mass public ever hearing a thing about his research? Of course not. And are these same pretender Jews going to risk giving his work a hundred times more exposure by attacking him publicly? Let's get back to Dr. L. Haik hammering the nails in. First, these researchers decided what conclusion they wanted to find, and then they set off to find evidence to support it. It is my impression that their results were written before they began the research. First, they shot the arrow, and then they painted a bullseye around it. Take a moment to ponder what he said there, folks. Does that sound like someone trembling in fear of Jewish lobby power in America, or someone thinking that his career is over and committing harikari? No. They painted a bullseye around it. It was not an off-the-cuff remark, but one he had chosen to use in Naharet's interview. This is a young man who is not standing on the shoulders of the fraudsters who have gone before him. On the contrary, he wants to stand on their academic bones by exposing them. And he has. More from his Haaretz interview. 
The various groups of Jews in the world today do not share a common genetic origin. We are talking here about groups that are very heterogeneous and which are connected solely by religion. The genome of European Jews is a mosaic of ancient peoples and its origin is largely Khazar. Now, on to some of the science highlights. Dr. L. Hike's research shows that the dominant element in the genetic makeup of European Jews is Khazar. For Central European Jews, it is 38%, while for East Europeans, it is 30%. To that, you can add his findings that, in both groups, their genome is mostly Western European. Surprise, surprise. The Roman Empire is the dominant lineage there. Those that settled on the frontier like retired soldiers and the locals with whom they produced families. There were some Jewish merchants there as El Haik did find some Middle Eastern roots which he suspects are Mesopotamian and a bit of Biblical Israel. But here comes the slam dunk. The Israel connection is such a tiny part of their overall genome that it cancels out their DNA title claim to the land. The good doctor would not wander into the swamp, but I will, by calling a spade a spade. What Dr. L. Hike has discovered, folks, is a reversed holocaust. The inventing of huge numbers of pseudo-Jews who have no more a blood claim to the land of Palestine than I do, even if I converted. What I have just stated in no way challenges a religious or cultural affiliation. But, as we all know, most Jews are not religious, including in Israel, where way more than most are not. Subtracting that, then all you have is the tribe, the DNA, which unites them to a shared history of persecution. But that, folks, is now all gone. Poof. Gone. Who among you does not have some genetic makeup of people who had suffered in ancient times? Even numbers of different people, five or ten different ones. Why should we allow the pretender Jews to send all of our gene pools to the back of the historical suffering bus as club med ancestors who enjoyed the all-inclusive treatment? I find that just a bit too convenient. So these Jews, are they then just a gang? united to be against all those not in the gang? Had they invented the whole story in a way like gang members take an oath and defend territory? And is that not where Herzl and others before him saw an opening, that the land could be a territory bond to unite Jews who are always fighting like cats and dogs amongst each other? And is not the 2,000 years of persecution claimed mostly by those who are not really descended from these actual people? Who really has holocausted whom here, and why? We hold Golda Meir's instant holocausting of the Palestinian people with her famous, there are no Palestinian people. Is this not poetic justice from Dr. L. Hike that he brings us scientific proof of there being no biblical Jewish people as such as they have presented themselves? And does this not also make a fraud of the historical anti-Semite smear by a people who aren't even Semites. I think it might be time to start setting things straight on the founding myths. I must admit that I never expected to get a free ticket to the truth from a smart young Israeli doctor from Johns Hopkins who has his moral rudder deep in the water. He is not a gangster, whoever his ancestors were. We call this leadership, with maybe a touch of Moses parting the founding myth waters for those who want to walk through to the other side. We shall now see if others choose to be free or to run with their gang. The militant Israelis, as always, knew this day was coming. That is what their nukes have been for, always. They knew. They never believed in it themselves. <laughs>